Uh, Bachi, hi, good to have you with us. How have you been? Wonderful, Ashu. Thanks, thanks for having me. It's been a great day. Uh, been good. Thanks. Bachi, excited to have you with us. You know, there's an incredible model at play at kitchen uh, kitchens that you're kind of building, right? It's, uh, you know, who yeah. would have thought a co-working for kitchens was possible? And, and you know, and and I'm sure this was this is this is something which are across to a couple of people, right? Uh, but I think you know, institutionalizing it as a concept would have been just so much more trickier. Uh, and that's largely because you know the, the diversity in food is just so immense, right? And every chef has his own uh, own cooking style, right? Uh, yeah. You know, it's difficult to fathom, right? Uh, and that's largely because of the complexities around you know all of this, right? Uh, you've taken path uh, and made a choice of institutionalizing a lot of this right you know and this just becomes so much more leaner and more efficient for any brand owner to come in and scale uh, right or even experiment for that matter right uh, without necessarily incurring the opex which is the larger and heavier element in, in in the food business right and also makes it very very inefficient in certain cases so you know excited to have you with us uh, and talk about more uh, in terms of what you're doing at kitchens but before we do that but see yeah, i'd love you to give us a quick round of your introduction to yourself uh, for all the good work that you've done in your career uh and we move into talking more about kitchens for that awesome thanks ashu excited to be here um so i'm a bombay boy born and brought up in bombay and live my life here and i'm junior by education did my masters in the us spent about 10 years in my career in career in consulting and tech uh spent about uh, half of that in different countries across the globe came back to india uh did a bit of more consulting then and then eventually joined uber uh which right. is where i got um uh, entered into the whole tech startup space and uh, right. spent about 5 years at uber uh doing different roles from ops to heading the business to running uber rides and uber eats in my last role i was running the operations for uber eats across india sri lanka and bangladesh right and that's where i kind of got um you know very close to food and food tech and you know the whole idea of co-working in kitchen spaces and cloud kitchens and all of that um nice. kind of came to reality in that in that 2 to 1 half years of journey um and yeah and i mean once we kind of exited the business after selling the business to zomato um you know there was pandemic there was time at hand and you know what let's just right. start something up let's just cook something up in the in the food space and that's how kitchen started brilliant brilliant now vaji uh, you know my next question right uh, you know uh, was why food right i mean if you answered that uh, partly right uh, but you know i would love you to sort of give me uh, and reflect on you know the complexity around food right now uh, you know when you institutionalizing it you kind of institutionalizing it in a very standard format right and that's largely yeah. uh, you know also to ensure that you know your costs for example don't necessarily uh, go haywire right so there's a certain consistency that you're doing right also replicability becomes very very important right uh, you know is food a difficult choice right let me put it that yeah so food is is tough right i mean and honestly before i entered this space i didn't realize how tough it was um, <laughs> when i was doing my <laughs> I was doing my research um you know before starting this up i spoke to a bunch of people chefs uh, entrepreneurs in industry and everybody said it's tough uh, everybody said it's operationally heavy but you know i didn't imagine this to be this tough um right. in my research i met my co-founder nachiket who's been in the food industry for about 20 years he's run his own right. restaurants is a he's been a consultant has been in master chef india as a consulting chef etc so he told me once this is tough but you know what um this is doable uh, right. and i think what gave us a little bit more um you know confidence is when we did our research we realized the food industry as such in general has not seen a lot of innovation in decades um you know the kitchen if you go to any restaurant any hotel any large small scale hotel um food is very personal um right. the processes the way the food is prepared it's still not industrialized standardized sure. um it's very personal Uh, and right. hence it's not seen a lot of innovation using tech and scalability and that's what right. gave us confidence you know what hey it's ripe for for disruption the only right. disruption that happened in the food industry is food delivery which <laughs> the aggregators have done um so they've built the pipe from the kitchen to the consumer right but no one fixed the kitchen right no one fixed the production side of it and that's right. why there is an opportunity um and that's the opportunity of the next decade interesting interest now uh basically uh, i'd like to understand the current construct of right how many kitchens uh right uh, how many brands uh, example uh, and i wonder what i would like to understand right uh, is, is 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 basically a question in continuation right how difficult is it scaling for a market like india right uh, you know where you have uh, such diversity in food right i mean for example uh, north is completely different and within north you have many many subsets right looking at down south right 
again you have a lot of complexity right uh, how difficult is it to engineer something like this I mean, when you think of power right i am comparing it with power because you know we essentially talk about shared space right uh, you know, it, it naturally sort of comes to it because there's also a real estate element right uh, in it uh, you know uh, this is a very very different dimension of sorts right uh, would love you to give us uh, a sense of uh, you know yeah. the so, scale so, and the yeah. complexity in there so i'll i'll take a step back right i mean sure. why this is important or why this is something that should be done sure. um if you look at india as a market we are largely an unorganized assembly market right you don't see enough of chain uh, food chains in the country the largest right. chain is domino's with about sure. 1400 outlets and the next biggest chain is a mcdonald's burger king kfc and the world right. and now rebel is coming up to that same level so sure. if you compare this into any developed market there are at least 500 or chains in the us right right um why is it so difficult for india as a market to scale and develop these multiple outlets for any brand is multiple things one is obviously the lack of capital second right. is lack of know how and it's just operationally very heavy business to build sure. so you will see a lot of local heroes and neighborhood heroes in every region every city every neighborhood but right. those guys don't scale from one neighborhood to the other Sure. and that's the problem we want to solve we said no what there has to be a scalability component of bringing that same pav bhaji that i like in south bombay how do right. i bring it to north bombay and maybe outside of north right. uh, right. and that's the problem we wanted to start solving now mm-hmm. there are two ways to solve it and a lot of people have tried it differently and i think we're still trying to figure out what's the right model one is obviously giving people spaces and create a co-working of cloud kitchens or sure. kitchens and where a lot of right. brands come together and then you can it's you no know, you reduce the capital expenditure for a brand mm-hmm. but in our research we realized capex is one part of the problem the second right. part is operations so we said we will do both for a brand so as right. our co-working kitchen we not just provide you kitchen services but we also operate the brand for you so if mm-hmm. arthur has a brand and he wants to kind of expand the brand all he has to mm-hmm. do is work with me to build scalable sops mm-hmm. and teach us how do we create your magic that you create in your neighborhood and then we take you to 20 kitchens right mm-hmm. we take you to 30 kitchens we take you pan right. india right and that's the vision we want to go with we started with one location in bombay in suburbs of bombay bang in the middle of a pandemic um and today we are at five locations that mm-hmm. two are um, in commission we operate mm-hmm. about 22 brands uh in in bombay right now all of them um right. and it's been about a year and a half for us in we started our first kitchen and we kind of gave our first order interesting um, and we just getting so much love from the brand every brand that we meet come and say you know what hey, this is god sent right you guys are helping me scale without right. me trying to put in a lot of money and i can focus on what is my core which is building the great food products marketing right. my food and building a good brand right you're managing an end to end for a for a food brand right uh, now essentially the role of a owner is become that of a financier in the process right uh, now when i took a look at food right and food is something which is very personal to me as a consumer right uh, i yeah. choose a brand a over a brand b because of, you know their ability to do it you know a few things better right uh, yeah. and master the taste right and that also yeah. becomes their ip and their moat and their defense in the process right as soon yeah. as they outsource right uh, how do you ensure they continue to do that right uh, it just becomes difficult right so, so assuming you have two pizza chains right How do you yeah. differentiate those two pieces, uh, right? And isn't the brand giving away too much, or are you essentially looking at brands, you know, which will, which will possibly at an entry level and eventually will go out to have their own, uh, you know, chains and uh, you know mechanics, right? As they get to that point, uh, which limits your role, right? Uh, would love to understand some of these complexities. Yeah. So I'll try to explain. I think first of all, this does not limit the brand role to just being a financier, right? Um, the brand still owns the brand. They own the marketing. They own the demand. Right. what they are parting away with complex operations when you build a food brand you building a brand you building your sops for one location now if i wanted to scale my restaurant from one neighborhood to the other i would have to find a chef i would have to find labor so i would have to find location i would have to set it up and i have to train my team right. to execute that we are that ecosystem we not taking away the brand we saying you right. know what hey if you would go and hire a team and right. train them and then monitor them we just are that team for you so we just right. taking away your ops nothing else mm-hmm. the brand remains with you you own it you decide how you want to run it you decide right. what new products you want to bring in there is 
Diwali, you want to do something for Diwali, you teach us what you were doing in your location and we'll scale it. So right. it's all about giving away um, your non-core, which mm-hmm. is not ops, right? Your ops is not your core. Your core is great food, marketing, building that brand. You keep that. Right. But what is not core, what is not scalable, what is not something that you expert at, give it to us and we'll do it. And that way you'll get it. Interesting. Now, Bazi, would have to understand this, right? I mean, while you take away all the pain, you know, from the food business, right? Which is just so inherent and and so so, so natural, right? Uh, in the process, right? Doesn't that, you know, isn't the monkey on your back now on, right? So anything that is a loss from an experience standpoint, right, becomes your responsibility. Or does the brand continues to engage with the customer and handle it from there on, uh, while they do not necessarily control the backend, right? Uh, and when I say the control backend, uh, essentially, is not in the wrong way. Uh, it's largely because you know you kind of looking at it, right? They're not monitoring the systems. Monitoring is essentially being done by you. Uh, doesn't that create a very disconnected ecosystem, right, between the consumer and the brand, right? Because, like I said, right, I mean, food is very, very experiential in nature. It requires an element of ownership, right? Uh, I see a little bit of a dichotomy when it comes to that relationship. Uh, how does that get solved in the process? So, um, the brand has full visibility on what's happening, right? Okay. They have mm-hmm. full visibility on what the consumers are talking about. Sure. They get the same information that I get. Right. Um, and when we respond to consumers if there is an issue or mm-hmm. when the brand responds to the consumers if there is an issue, sure. um, it's kind of a joint piece. For a consumer, kitchens is not serving. Consumers right. doesn't understand or doesn't know that the food that they are ordering from brand A is being coming from my factory or kitchen. Right. It is coming from the brand. Right? So, so that um, while the brand is a little away from the core operation, sure. they're still in tune with what's happening. They're mm-hmm. still in tune with what the business. They're still in tune with what the customers are saying. And then it's in my interest to go back and tell the brand if there is a miss. If I'm getting a consistent feedback about a certain item, saying you know what, hey, this item needs to be spicy, or this item needs mm-hmm. to be cold, or it's hot, or whatever it is, or the packaging is not working, we go back to the brand and work with them hand in hand and solve it. Because at the end of the day. I am looking at scaling that same brand to 7, 10, 20 locations, not right. just one. So right. I need to figure out what's the brand to make it scalable. So it's more like hand in hand. We become like a partner, not an outsourcer for a brand. Um, and that relationship kind of takes the brand from one location to 20. Interesting. Masi, does there is there an element of exclusivity as well, right? I mean, because, you know, I mean, uh, I mean you know, certain brand owners, right, or promoters can be, uh, you know, a little touchy about that, right? So is there a certain exclusivity that you work with or or is this an open uh, ecosystem for all? Uh, and, and literally a plug and play ecosystem like that kind of ability, right? So how does that work? So it's an open ecosystem, right? We want to democratize the access of good food across sure. the com- country, right? I mean, anybody and everywhere should have access to good food. Um, mm-hmm. And the brand should also have access to scalable opportunities. So it's an open right. ecosystem. There is no exclusivity. If I have two pizza brands working in the same kitchen, we manage and make sure that there is a segregation of information, ingredients, manpower, um, and materials. Right? Uh, but it's an open ecosystem. I can have two pizza brands in the same in the same location, and it actually makes my system efficient. Right. I'm able to deliver better pizzas, faster pizzas to the consumer, and the brand automatically benefits out. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah. To answer your question, it's an open ecosystem. Very interesting. Uh, but see, I want to understand one thing, right? Now, India, you know, when you look at, especially when you look at food, right? I mean, uh, we have great one-off restaurants, right? Or or one-off, yeah. uh, uh, you know, outlets, right? Now, uh, yeah. you know, when you when you look at the promoter, right? Mindset continues to be a huge challenge, right? They don't want to give it away, uh, right? Uh, they want it to be in the family. You know, all the nuances, right? Uh, and, you know, our, our cuisines, for example, are extremely complex, right? Uh, you know, you're doing special masalas and so on and so forth, right? Uh, now, how difficult is that mindset to tackle, right? Uh, you know, would love to understand that. Uh, is this something, you know, is this a bottle which is more, uh, you know, relevant for, say, for example, continental cuisines or or or, or Chinese, right? Cuisines that people adopted that don't, don't naturally sort of come to us or culturally come to us, right? Is this more relevant for them or, uh, you know, is this agnostic to the kind of food uh, that we do, right? But how difficult is the mindset, right, when it comes to some of these nuances? I'm not going to. I'm going to just plug my charger before I die. Just give me a minute. Sorry. Sure. Yeah. So I think um, to your answer your question, right, it depends on the food. Um, mm-hmm. It's not specific to a certain food type. 
as long as the brand and the partner that i'm working with is willing to kind of make sure that the recipes the sops of the product is scalable there are ways to make sure that the consistency and the quality and the ingredients remain the way now some brands like you said are touchy about their secret sauce and that's okay so what we do with such brands is say we say you know what hey, if you have a secret sauce that you don't want to share your recipes with i completely respect that you make that secret sauce in the quantity and the time i tell you and you dispatch it to me and you give it to me and i'll use that sauce in the recipe that you tell me right and the other stuff which are already available in the market and you're buying cheese from some vendor and pizza based on some other vendor and vegetables from some vendor i'll plug into your supply chain so that there is consistency and and uh, quality control across the brand um so right. we work with the brand to make sure that we are actually not creating a separate supply chain we're actually mm-hmm. plugging ourselves into their supply chain to make sure that the quality aspect of the food is impeccably perfect right right and the second aspect of the quality is the training so mm-hmm. our training is so solid that about 4 weeks our our guys and the brand team engages to make sure the training is absolutely spot on mm-hmm. and we go live only when the brand says everything that our team makes interesting and approves mm-hmm. so once you have those two sorted right the ingredients are sorted and the training is sorted there is it's as perfect as the brand would do it on their own does that make sense now i think much even one thing which can't be you know kind of stands out in this entire uh you know the conversation that we have right and, and in largely what the proposition the kitchen has to offer right uh, is you bring in a so you know of course from standardizing the operations uh, you bringing in a sense of scale right and a possibility of scale right uh, you know because there is you know now i don't have to as a brand owner carry the load of creating infrastructure every single place that i kind of now operate at right uh, one question of course that stands out is the business model which will come to interest a bit right but what i want to understand is the selection uh, you know given that you're now a partner in a way you're a rocket ship right where you are essentially hand holding and helping uh, this promoter and founder to sort of uh, expand at scale uh yeah. selection of market is something that i want to understand right uh, how are you for example doing that uh, uh you know and does that becomes a limitation because you know of say your expansion plans given that you're in a early stage of what you're doing uh, or is this uh how are you solving that on the front end that right a priority of market expansion of market how are you looking at that so um right now we are just in bombay right it's about a year sure. and a half we wanted to make sure that we are able to um get get the product market fit of mm-hmm. our infrastructure services in bombay right. um right. get that scale and you know what hey i can operate so we started with one kitchen multiple brands we went to three kitchens now we are at five moved to seven and we are trying to create our system in such a way that multiple locations can be run in the same city with multiple mm-hmm. brands once that is done and we understand the nuances of running that we move to the next set of market now the question you asked is okay how do you decide the geography or is there any specific way of looking at the geography right mm-hmm. our next step right now we targeted bombay because i am in bombay and i understand the market so we took bombay right. we said we take tier 1 city metro so right. our next market will be a tier 2 or a tier 2 plus to mm-hmm. see the benefit of doing a similar model in a smaller market now right. my research tells me that tier 2 markets um have the spending power but necessarily do not have the supply or the options or choice that the consumer wants they probably will have um one or two options for a pizza one or two options for uh, you know asian food etc mm-hmm. um but they won't have too many options too many local heroes right. um so our hypothesis is that we want to go to a tier 2 market half of bombay to see if this works and if this works then we prove tier 1 works we prove right. tier 2 works and then we find smart markets where we can kind of jump and go right i mean i'll give an example indoor is a great market so right. people love the food there right sure. but it's very local right the food right. in indore you see is very very local sure. there is no um you don't see great you know international food there but yeah. there's a there's a there's a potential supply for so mm-hmm. can i go to indore and launch this and see if this works right that's not pune right. is a great market to go to, right so we're trying to pour into a tier 2 market right after bombay to see the product market fit in that and then mm-hmm. decide what the expansion strategy should look like interesting once you want uh, i'd like to understand this right so when you are you doing this kind of an integration right with the brands right and you kind of partnering with brands right what's the impact on their operating uh, mechanics right uh, and and the impact on the financial 
uh, viability, right? Of course, there is the capex gets minus, right? That is for sure, right? But uh, you know, because of this relationship, are they able to offer better pricing in the market? You you mentioned of Indore, right? Now, when I look at tier two and tier three India, uh, which is a huge market, right? The good part is that you know, with what's happened in the last two and a half years, aspirationally we've grown, right? Uh, yeah. so kids in a tier two three also want to have a faster, offer different version in a variety, right? So exper- the nature of experimentation and experimenting is increased, right? Uh, so at one and it just seems to be a very very viable play uh, for you right uh, yeah. you know but i would like to understand you know disposable availability of uh, you know sources of income right and availability of excessive or extra capital right which but can go on and sort of spend is limited uh, in those markets right the employment again is a big problem so aspirational yeah. they're peaking yes uh, but from that liquidity standpoint they're not necessarily there they're possibly looking at those cheaper options right in door for example you kind of took up right uh, you know kind of mentioned off uh it gives them those options right where they can experiment with those things that should be part of cost uh does this relationship that you have that kitchens has with brands right are you able to give that that bring in that competency uh where you yes. can engage with the audience could not to understand that better uh, the yeah so i think i think it's a it's a very big reality check for the brand right when we start working with brands one outlet is great when we move to three outlets they realize you know what their processes are breaking their vendors are breaking they're not able to give right. the food or the supply at the same rate etc etc so that's when we say you know what hey we'll help you scale this right because we have 20 30 brands mm-hmm. and so many locations our right. buying power is better and higher than any individual brand sure. so we say you know what now we've come to a point where i can actually help you buy better mm-hmm. at a better rate right strategically mm-hmm. and smarter um for our locations and also for your location that's when we kind of have a much closer relationship with our partners and over hey let's help you buy better sure. now when we do that everything that we buy for the brand from raw materials to food drinks to packaging there is economies of scale in every single item and that's when we start getting better pricing better margins so our fundamental belief is when we kind of do that and go to a tier 2 market we are able to provide the same quality food same consistency at a better price because in tier 2 market the real estate is cheaper so the cost yeah. of setup is cheaper my manpower is cheaper and i'm also going to get an edge in the buying power on my ingredients so sure. putting all of that together we should be able to pass on significant amount of benefit back to the mm-hmm. consumer and give the brand the edge to kind of grow super once well, that automatically brings me to a to a business side question right uh, something that i've been itching to sort of ask and understand right uh, you know uh, in a co-working and in a shared economy i think the matrix is fairly clear right i think the maths is very very clear in terms of you know how to do it uh i'd love to understand and given and this is this is a absolutely new space uh, a very virgin sort of a territory there are no very clear models right uh, you know what's the business model like i mean uh are they are these brands paying you for the infrastructure that you put them you know uh, that they they can you to sort of utilize from you is there a rental model to it or are you a partner like you said right uh, in scale were you essentially working either on a hybrid or on a per order basis right where are what's the relationship like i love one and that so at a very high level our business model is pure and simple mm-hmm. right we we uh, bring on board brands mm-hmm. um there is a small um initial investment that the brand makes to be part of the network okay uh, which is i would say 1/10 of the cost that they would spend on setting up on their own Right. and then everything else is revenue whatever money we take is purely on what business the brand gets on the table right okay um and uh, hence we call ourselves more like a partner to the mm-hmm. brand than an outsourced provider right we're not just an outsourced service provider we're more like a partner we hand in hand as the brand grows we automatically start growing and making money on it um and honestly in india this is a new model and people are trying to find different ways of doing it there are right. small startups in every other like we are small right every other city you see a small startup trying to do something similar and trying okay. to perfect that map um right. but there is a big boy sitting in dubai a uh, brand called kitopi they've done right. this really well um they've scaled this across the middle east and they've showed the way on how this is be done right so right. um we are trying to find a right balance there um but to your to answer your question at a very high level it's a pure revenue share model are you not absorbing the, the risk that the brand runs right 
uh and then the entire communication strategy that the that the that the brand runs right uh, in a way because you're in a revenue model right uh yeah. in a way you're kind of biting into that risk that's number one number two uh you know that makes your model extremely heavy from a real estate standpoint from all the equipment and the kitcheneing uh you yeah. know the equipment and the furnishing that you're going to do right uh, real estate yeah. anyways uh i mean that's a fixed cost right uh, of course uh doesn't that makes you uh bulk uh to scale the way you would want to right because i mean you know india is a large market right i mean aspiration we are there uh you know you would want to scale and any brand any promoter would want to scale as fast as possible right doesn't these two things uh open you up to a very uh you know a risk that is difficult to anticipate yeah so i've had i've had this conversation with one of investors across sure. um the across the country the last one is you know this is not scalable And right. I'm like, yeah, this is not a software business. I can't press a button and a kitchen shows up somewhere, right? right? This is not right. a, a, a business that can be done from home. It's an operationally right. heavy business. Right. But this is the only way the business can happen, right? If I want to run 200 kitchens, I got to have 200 infrastructure space. Right. I got to have 200 locations, right? Um, so there's no two ways about it. How to build that business? Right. Is it scalable? Yes. Is it slow to scale? Yes, because it takes time to build a factory. Right. right um but to your point on binding into the risk see what happens is when i'm running a single brand out of one mm-hmm. the risk to break even or to justify that capital investment is higher because you right. got to make sure that one brand is perfect able to churn out x number of orders a day right. give me x number of revenues a month to kind of justify my cost right when i'm running 10 15 brands out of the same location which is mm-hmm. a little larger but as economies of scale I have a similar set of equipment. I have a standardized manpower, and they're kind of churning out food for 15 brands. The risk is divided across 15 different brands. Sure. So, if you look at it from my perspective, mm-hmm. I'm not only de-risking the brand, but I'm de-risking myself by getting smart brands to kind of coexist in the same situation. Right. Sure. There is a capital uh, investment in the beginning, but the risk to kind of turn around that capital is lower because. I'm not dependent on only one brand to perform. I am making sure that 15 brands are coexisting in the kitchen, and even if five perform and really well, and the remaining 10 are just so-so, I'm still de-risking myself. It's like the investment thesis, right? An investor would put money in 100, 100 startups and just make sure one kind of throws it out of the park. Um, right. We're not saying that. We're saying we'll be smart about bringing in all the brands we get, but de-risk the entire model in a way that all the brands perform at a base level. And they're good. Sure. Interesting. Now, Manji, uh, you know I understand the math side of it, right? And and you know and uh, you know the and you know the, the way kind of you kind of dissecting the question is is sensible, right? Now, what I wanted to understand, right? And something in my mind, I find it to be a massive uh, issue, right? Uh, is expectation. Right? Now, everybody who's starting a business, right? Uh, while they're passing on a, a part of operations to you, right? I still, as a promoter, have a certain expectation in my mind, right? uh in case my brand doesn't necessarily perform the way i would uh right could lead into a certain conflict right and that could possibly be because you know the consumer side expectation uh is not getting met right uh, you know the way the cuisine is for example getting delivered yeah i'm not able to communicate that differentiator right uh, in the process right that relationship becomes uh very commoditized if i can put it that way right uh, what's your sense of it i mean i am i'd love i mean i'm sure you this is this is a question that you has crossed your mind right possibly has has occurred to you as well right what should you do of the expectations that the promoter has right uh, not that you're directly responsible for it right but i in a way hold you accountable right because at the end of the day what matters to me is the quality of food which goes out right and that in a way is being handled by you, right what's your sense of it to me yeah that is absolutely right this is like in any relationship right you got to make sure expectations are very clear. Right, you got to make sure the responsibilities are super clear. You got to make sure that you're meeting those baseline expectations that are set out in the first, you know, the tenets of your relationship. Right. Um. So how do you do that? Right. So let's say expectations on part of on quality and the consistency of the food. I kind of answer that question by making sure that we are making biting into the same supply chain, um, and kind of getting the right set of training. Sure. The second expectation is, hey, I'm not doing the business that I was expecting. Now that you always get it. I am a hero in my neighborhood, but when I move to neighbor, when I move to Ashu's neighborhood, I'm not getting the same demand. Once you go going on, maybe your food is not right, um, and that's a question we get. And I think what it means is we got to make sure and sit with the brand and help them understand that you know what you are probably 
a share in your area but when you go to the other area it takes time to become <laughs> call right. at your own territory right so you got to win the cut um and it's a journey no brand becomes an overnight success unless you're very very lucky and you're just kind of solving a particular gap um so this is more like an expectation problem that we work with the brands you know what hey let's work with you let's have a 3 to 6 months marketing and a demand plan to solve for the demand and you no know, let's put to your target what we will do what you will do and we'll achieve that sure so that's the point on the expectation on the demand and third mm-hmm. expectation is clear profitability and revenue now that is very very clear from day one we are very super clear on what is the revenue share that the brand is going to get so no matter i make 100000 rupees or 10000 rupees the brand is still getting x percent of that revenue so that's mm-hmm. super super clear so if you kind of met meet this expectation then are very clear in your communication in the way you work with brand um it's not that difficult and believe right. me 23 odd brands over last one and a half year we've not had a single brand walk away where there was an issue in communication expectation mismatch or you know what the brand said you know what is hey, this is not something that you no know, i expected um we've had churn we've had brands that have decided to kind of pull out because that market didn't suit we tried everything in the book we made sure everything possible that we could do but that right. market was just not ready uh, for that particular brand uh, and that particular cuisine so we it's smarter to pull it out because it just adds a lot of strain to the entire ecosystem uh interesting point i'm sorry i'm sorry the converse also happened there are brands that have taken completely knocked it out of the park and said bunty this location is seeming like better than my current location right. i want to go and start my own outlet there now that's also happened which is actually someone would say you know what bunty that's a detrimental to my business i say you know what actually that's a great winning story i'm helping brand to find locations that they can work on and then they unlock that potential fully with there and that you know it hurts us but i think it's a success story for the brand and it's going to give me more and more brands to work you know uh, i think one thing which is very clear right i think this is just you know you 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 know i love the ease with which you kind of putting it out right i think it's easier said than done but i think it also sort of saves you from a lot of replication that can that can happen right uh, and i'm sure that's going to happen right because a lot of people who have interest in real estate you know continue to experiment with a variety of things but i think very poorly so uh, i think what we're talking about is 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 very very i think it's a different animal altogether uh now bachi uh one more uh you know question on the challenges side of uh thing right uh, and it's important to understand Now today, uh, you know, we're in a different, different market, right? And especially last two, two and a half has been a very, very, uh, you know, uh, from a consumer standpoint, right? It's been a, it's a very different kind of a time, right? Uh, we're exposed to a lot of, uh, you know, stuff, right? Like I said earlier, you know, one of my earlier points, right? Uh, we're aspirationally we're in a different zone altogether, right? Uh, and and that's not just for tier A, tier two cities. Right? That's something that we're seeing across the country, right? The requirement for brands to be very agile is is just so much more important, right? Uh, yeah. You know. You'll have to very quickly devise uh, new products, new strategies. You know, a variety of things, right? Your cuisines and your menu cannot continue to look the same. Right? Um, you know, what's your relationship with the brand owners and the brands as far as that business concerned, right? How quickly are you? Uh, or what kind of agility do you bring in? Or one of course, you know, there is no backend pressure per se, right? Uh, that just is eases a lot of pressure, right? But from a menu standpoint, how quickly do you? uh act and react to you know how the ecosystem possibly wants uh how the demand is going to play out right how how are you bringing that predictability in the environment uh and helping brands adapt and adjust to the expectations so i'll go back to the same thing right i mean we are partners with brand so the brand sure. believes that there should be a change in the way we are doing the menu and the data says it and the customer says it we all work together to make it happen Right. Step one, and I think even before we start the brand, what we do with the brand is we review their menu. And you know what? Hey, you want to go to location A? This is your cuisine type. Let's look at your menu. Let's look at the data from your existing location to see what is selling. Um, if you open the aggregator app today, um, most of the time the consumer is fatigued by the amount of scroll he or she has to do to look at like right. 150 items in the menu of a particular brand. Step right. one is we help the brand cut down the menu. You know what? Hey, let's focus on your core. Your core right. is. These 30 items are bringing you 90% of the revenue. Let's just do those 30 really well, and then right. we'll add to those items. As in, when you kind of mix and match and make something new, there is a Diwali. Let's create something for the for the festive season. If there is an Eid, let's create something for the festive season. Um, if a certain product is not doing well for X Y Z reason, let's push it out. If I'm going to a highly vegetarian neighborhood and I have an entire menu which is full of meat, that's not going to sell. so let's work with the brand to kind of cut that up so i think we are very agile um and rightfully so uh 
with the brand to make sure that whatever the brand needs to succeed in that neighborhood we're able to deliver because if the brand doesn't succeed like i said we won't succeed and it's our money on the table right so it's super important that we are kind of tied to the hip completely aligned and working as a team to deliver whatever is expected uh, out of us for the benefit of the customer and the brand interesting uh was a uh, very important one regarding the hallel right uh, and i would want to uh, probe you a, a little more on this right i mean how are you ensuring uh you know this the entire vegetarian and non-vegetarian thing right? i mean india is 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 a massively uh you know the value system is uh, uh is fairly deep and thick right uh, um and and a very difficult one to deal with right especially when you're doing uh, you know the back right uh, what's the strategy there how are you maintaining that uh, you know i don't know sanity uh, hygiene uh, so i am a vegetarian and a core at that i don't even need <laughs> egg so um, i'm very picky about it right i mean i think when we started um, i think that was the first thing i kind of went to my chef and my co-founder and said oh hey we got to make sure that this is this sanctity of veg and non-veg and meat right. and non-meat is maintained everywhere and it's kind of ingrained in every single team member that i hire everything in the kitchen is tagged the utensils are tagged the fridges are separate the crates are separate like all of that sanctity exists um the training is very solid with the team to make sure right. that um the meat and the non meat products or the veg and non veg products are kept separate so much right. so that when we pack food if it's the order if it's the same order from the same brand if there is a vegetarian and a non vegetarian in the same order those are packed separately and sent out um right. because um and that stems from the fact that a i am a non meat eater and i want to make sure that when food comes to me it's separate um and also because when you work with the brand the brand also kind of wants to maintain their sanctity right i mean Absolutely. nobody wants to serve um you know wrong food to the consumer and right. kind of uh, hurt their sanctity um right. so all of that goes back to training uh, sops processes that we set in our kitchen and kind of how anal we are about it um to kind of maintain <laughs> interesting interesting once it was the end of a conversation this has been an absolutely phenomenal conversation right and i think uh, you know food is a is a topic i think which is i think close to every indian right uh, whether yeah. we whether we like it or not right uh, we like our food uh, uh, you know and i think i think no conversation can happen in one session right i i you know and i how i want this conversation to go on right uh, unfortunately i have to bring in the first session to a close right but i'm i you know i cannot uh, kind of uh, end this without uh, asking a very cliche but an important question right what are the next two and a half years like and uh, i'd love to understand that so we've raised a, a small um, uh, you know investment round right now uh, we raised about a couple of months back um so right now we are head down kind of making sure we are delivering to our promises it's an obligation for investors that we got to make sure we're delivering to what we kind of set out to right so next two, right. two and a half years is um scaling the business like i said proving this model to a tier two market um making sure that we are able to kind of um you know live up to our vision of democratizing access to food um good food across right. the, across the neighborhoods in the cities um and then kind of test it out and then slowly slowly go back and innovate the back end of our kitchen right i mean this entire machinery works well um if our operations are solid right, right. so everything about how do you leverage tech to kind of make sure the ops is like you know six sigma 99.99% right. of that right? <laughs> right um and that's what i think kitopi started doing that already like they started integrating tech to kind of make sure pu stuff is um done well people don't make ma- mistakes right the uh, the recipes are standardized so we are kind of putting all of those building blocks in place we're very very young very very small very agile um but the intent is next to and a half years is to kind of build that solid foundation so that any brand anywhere in the country wants to scale boom we can kind of turn it around uh, and so much so right we are trying to bring international brands we're working with a sri lankan brand today to bring them a show ac- across the ocean here in bombay i'm working with a jordanian brand to bring them to bombay right so there is a lot of opportunity uh, people want to come to india as a market we just need to create that platform where anybody can plug and play and start a brand super super Manji, this has been an absolutely spectacular conversation, right? Thank you so much for, uh, you know, taking us through these these various nuances, right? I mean, this is not a, you know, this is not an easy business, right? This is not a very atypical, uh, you know, co-working business, right? I mean, we continue to sort of allude to the co-working concept, right? I think that was for a better understanding, right? But I think this is a business which 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 is, uh, which has many many complexities, <laughs> which has which has many moving parts, right? Uh, and I think to yeah. sort of bring it all into harmony and you know and and sort of to deliver that that experience right uh, packaged in that uh, box right uh, i think it's 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 almost close to madness right in many ways yeah uh, but i think i think what you what you put put together i think is a great model 
uh, in place, right? Uh, you know, I think what we can create is a is a foundation for many many brands to sort of come through, right? And I think that's very beautiful about this, right? I think I think as a market we have to, or we are kind of uh, you know moving into territory which is more institutionalized, right? Which is where we're going to consume for more and more brands, right? Uh, and I think. The, the ease that you bring to the table, right, of many of these brands getting established with that foundation, uh, I think uh, it is going to fast track that possibility, right? Uh, and they're going to have many, many winners coming out of India, right? Which will eventually scale into that market as well. Uh, you know, we're going to cover some of that in the next conversation, right? Uh, Fingers you know, crossed, man. Fingers crossed. Uh, but I think, I think this is, this, is, this is absolutely phenomenal, right? Once we wish you all the way best, uh, you know, much speed, uh, and look forward to having you with us much sooner. This is Wonderful. a never-ending topic, right? Like I said, you know, we love our food, uh, right? And I think that experience is very, very important. We're becoming discerning. Uh, I'll have many more questions, right, in our, awesome. in our sessions in future. Thank you so much for doing this. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, Ashish. Thank you.